Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Join me stood in the garden outside. It's a lovely day today. I thought, as I'm not doing anything much today, not working, not climbing, be training later on, it'd be a good day to have a go sorting through all my kit, getting it cleaned and tidied and remarked and everything ready for the winter because uh, I will still climb. I have still got bits of climbing work, but not so much now. So it's a good opportunity to make the most of a nice day, be outside doing it all out there. Uh, so I thought I'd talk you through that. Um, first off, what we've got to do is go and uh, get the kit to start with out of the kit cupboard. All right. Um, there's quite a lot of kit in my kit cupboard that needs marking. So whenever I do this, I do end up thinking, ah, why did I bother starting this job? Because there's just so much of it. As I said, quite a lot of kit. I'm going to mark all this now. Uh, what I usually do is you can just about see on there a little bit of red. It's really quite hard to see though. Uh, it's um, I, I use nail varnish for it. What I've done this year though is I've bought something slightly different to do it with. As you can see there's a lot of bits of metal and little things of sling to mark. So it's going to take me a long time. So what I'm going to do first is grab the kit I need. Uh, first off, let's get started with the ropes then because I can chuck one in the wash and get on with other stuff while it's spinning away. Quite a dirty one, needs a wash to be stored ready for the winter and all that. Um, it's coiled up normally, um, not super neat but not terrible either. This isn't the way to do it, okay? And uh, we'll cut to why not in a minute I expect. But I'm going to throw it in, no detergent in there, the washing machine's gone through a cycle to get rid of anything uh, that might be in there. You can get proper rope wash liquid, works well but I just find water, actually warm water, I put it on a 30, uh, does a, a good job. Um, but you'll see why we might want to do something slightly different in a second, but let's put that on for now. What also gets washed in my washing machine is this lovely Sling Mountain t-shirt. Getting a little plug in there, there's a link below, you can buy them off the uh, off my website and uh, keep me uh, and the boy fed and watered for a little bit longer. Okay, so the washing machine's finished uh, with that rope and this is the reason for not putting it in like I did. It is no longer coiled up, but those coils that were wrapped round and stuff that's still wrapped around in there somewhere so basically the rope just comes out like an utter mess if you put two ropes in there even though they're coiled up they come out like an intertwined oh absolute snake's nest uh, so i wouldn't advise doing it that way it won't take you forever to undo it. it's not the end of the world but nor is it ideal so what i would suggest doing is i'll just demonstrate on this one what I do is I get the middle, which is marked on this one, but if you haven't got the middle marked, get both ends and, and find the middle. And then I just daisy chain it. So daisy chain is like a load of slippery hitches, basically. So if we do that, all the way through the 50 meters, 60 meters, however long your rope is, then chuck it in, it won't get so tangled. It's a much better way of doing it. So that's the way I do it. It's all laid out, uh, rope's gone in the wash as you saw earlier, which means I can get on with this lot. Um, and I can get, before I mark any kit, I want to go through it all, sort of service any stuff that needs servicing, clean any stuff that needs cleaning, all that kind of thing. So uh, I guess the, the sort of the most complicated, in inverted commas, uh, things are the cams. So uh, I have got one here, one of my black diamond cam lots that's properly seized up, right? Most of them are moving just, just fine. Um, so I'll do a bit of preemptive maintenance, but this one needs a bit more attention. It's properly seized. So what I try and do first is just blast it under the hot tap to try and you know blow out any detritus and stuff. I'd give it a, a liberal dose of the uh, GT85, leave it to soak a bit uh, and just keep trying to crank it. But if it's still not moving, uh, I can go into the kitchen and do something with it that way. 
once the water's boiling, put your cam in there. I try and keep the fabric bit and the plastic bit away from the metal, just hold it in there for a minute. Might take a minute, might take a couple of minutes. Try and move it while it's in there as well. Keep it, uh, you know, just get it moving as much as you possibly can. Try it now. There we go. One nice moving cam. Happy days. Give it a shake. We'll dry it off. Do some more if you need to do some more. Take that off the boil. Uh, try and make a bit of cam flavoured tea maybe. Boiling it uh, did the trick. That's a real, real neat uh, thing to do to, um, you know, to free any last bits of stuff that's seizing it up. Doesn't always work, but it's a good way of rescuing some pretty stuck cams sometimes. So I've done that. Uh, what I'm going to do now, uh, give it a bit of wipe to get rid of any of um, any sort of moisture that I can get rid of, and then GT85. Now I find this works a bit better than WD40. WD40 sort of leaves a bit of a residue, bit that's a bit stickier so it ends up attracting more dirt so although it will solve or help to solve the problem in the short term long term it makes it a bit worse so just a liberal coating spray it move it and immediately it's, it's going much more freely i just wipe off the excess uh, i try not to get any on the slings although it's um, having read quite a bit about it it won't damage the slings by all account but i just rather not sort of mark them or get them sticky or anything wipe off like i say the excess stuff and then that's good to go right so that's how to, uh, you know, some ways of solving like a properly stuck cam. But now all of this kit, right, at some point has been exposed to sort of salty air. So it's worth, you know, not going to boil everything, but everything should probably have a rinse at some point, right? I've done it throughout the year a couple of times with all these bits and pieces, so I'm not going to do it today. But basically just a big bucket of water, dunk it in, give it a shake, leave it to dry. Um, uh, and that's just going to get rid of uh, the salt which is just really corrosive so that's a really good thing to do at this time of year all the cams because they're kind of moving things even though they're moving just fine um let's say rinse it and then spray it wipe off the excess jobs are given so i'm not going to show you me doing each cam it's the smaller ones actually just worth noting that tend to get a bit stickier so i pay a bit more attention to those ones um but i'm not going to show you me doing all the flipping cams so let's just see i've done them they're my play ones personal ones black diamond camelots and little totems and then this is my standard work set which is the dmm dragons these are quite new this year other things I'm checking for at this point, and this goes for a lot of the kit, but cam specifically, that the wires are still intact, uh, the lobes are moving, like I said, there's no weird bending if they've been fallen on or anything like that. Um, wires up here. Uh, and then the sling as well. Now these are all quite new this year, so the slings are, are no problem at all. But move them around a bit, check those bits that are hidden in that nose there worth checking all the stuff you know when you're doing these proper checks so you check it each time you go climbing but you're probably a bit more of a casual glance uh, whereas now's the time to be pretty thorough with it so psh, spray all them and everything as well the other moving thing we've got are the, the carabiners aren't they so we can we've rinsed them we've dried them if they need any spray spray them great that's uh, nice and simple uh, on all the quick draws we're going to check the dog bones that there's no fraying and stuff on that um, that's all good nuts are right in front of me so what we're going to do with nuts well in addition to what we've already said it's just a more thorough check again right i've got these half nuts i've been using these on my personal rack i'm actually quite liking them uh offsets on my um work rack there you go uh but half nuts i'm trying now with the nuts it's a good time again to check the wires now it tends to be where they bend here uh, that really uh, that's where they start going first and as soon as wires start snapping I, I bin them off you've probably got quite a lot of strength if it's only like one or two wires but just sack it off personally they get uh, it's on the bend they're weaker anyway and that's where they kind of get attacked with nut keys a lot of the time isn't it there and sort of on this side as well you can see some cuts out of the actual metal they're all fine though so good time to check good time to check you're not missing any replace any ones that, that have disappeared over the course of the year get them out of the way got a couple of grigris here um, same again rinse it dry it spray it it's moving parts isn't it with these ones you can kind of clear out the grind that gets in their ropes put kind of a lot of just rope dust in and they pick up all the dirt off the floor and everything as well so worth paying a bit of attention to them checking for wear as well you can see how that one's wearing a bit you kind of work on a sort of a 10 percent wear um uh, it's time to retire it after that this one's actually it's not far away from that um this one's a bit closer so maybe it's time for a new grigri uh dirty ropes wear it quicker so that can go over there slings 
should have put them in with the, the ropes. I think I said that earlier, give them a clean. Uh, again, check for any fraying. These ones on, on my personal kit are like six millimeter ones. They, they're quite soft, nice and light. They just won't last as long. Uh, um, rock is pretty friendly around here. If you're on the gritstone and stuff, I can imagine these getting destroyed pretty quick. Right. Carabiners, check them, clean them, spray them. Yeah, you get the theme. Same with all the other stuff as well, really. It's all, yeah, it's just work stuff, play stuff. Harness though, a bit grubby this harness, so I could wash that, couldn't I? It's worth going over this as well though, all right? The high wear areas are where are the belay loop and then where the belay loop touches uh, the uh, tie-in points as well. So good opportunity, or they should check it every time, just to sort of move the belay loop out of the way, have a look what's going on. There's a bit of furriness there, but nothing that's of any concern to me. All the bar tacking, all still intact, no fraying or anything like that. Buckles, um, again, we've talked about the salt and, and rinsing them and stuff if you're on Seacliffs, but at some point it's worth doing it anyway. They get, because they're banging into each other all the time, they get kind of the anodizing gets worn away and that's when they're probably more uh, susceptible to a bit of corrosion. This one's in really good order, though there's no sharp edges, cuts or corrosion or anything like that. So again, rinse it, dry it, jobs are good. And I think that's about it really. So uh, we've put the rope in the washing machine, we've cleaned the cams, we've cleaned everything else just by rinsing it. Make sure it's all dry before you put it into storage, but that's a good and you also need it to be dry to do the marking bit. Now you can see I've got a lot of kit here. I mentioned uh, at the beginning that my kit has this kind of nail varnish on it. You can't really see it very well on the camera. It lasts a long time. The, the other options you'll see a lot are electrical tape wrapped around in a certain colour. That's a good way. That one's got some random stuff on it because that's a found one. That's just a lever beaner on my personal kit. Um, tough tags are a good option as well, they last a bit longer than the electrical tape plus they obviously have your, um, your details on so you might get something sent back to you if you've lost it, uh, if the person is feeling kind so that, that might save you some money although a bit more expensive, only takes a cam to be returned or something and you're winning aren't you. This year though, um, it's uh, the nail varnish is good and I've still got loads of it because it lasts flipping ages for just marking kit. Uh, I'm trying though, the, the sort of model paint takes me back to being a child, that does. Somewhere here I found a screwdriver, so I can just open that up, get that out of the way. And then I've got a little stirrer, I've given it a shape but I'll give it a stir as well. There we go, oh pretty thick stuff that. Now I haven't used this on um, the stuff before, it's a bit thicker than I was expecting but we'll be alright I think. It's quite a funny colour, I was expecting it to be um, a bit brighter red actually, that's the trouble of buying things on Amazon isn't it, it's not always quite what you expect. I shall put that out the way before I get it all over my clothes. I've got a little paintbrush here, obviously this is massive compared to what I'm going to be marking, uh, so I would recommend getting a smaller one but I haven't got one so I thought I'd just do uh, grab a little bit like that, actually a little bit less than that. And then literally just going to mark every last bit of kit with this new paint. Uh, and although it's a slightly funny colour, you can see, hopefully, uh, that it stands out quite well and I don't think anyone else is going to have the exact, exact colour on their kit so I should be alright. Uh, I'll probably put a touch more on than that one, I want it to be nice and obvious. I just do it on that part of the carabiner because that's not getting much wear or anything so that should last for being yonkies in there and that's a nice obvious colour. Other bits of kit that I'm going to mark uh, is everything really. Um, whatever you can um, think of, I'm going to mark it. So perhaps the gree gree, I'm looking for a little spot in there that's not going to get much wear. So probably on this gold bit, I'll just put a little stripe in a minute. Slings are the other one though. Now, I do not want to get any chemicals uh, on the sling, but what we have got on most slings somewhere is a little tag like that. So what I'm going to do, the nail varnish has disappeared off this one altogether anyway. What I'm going to do is carefully just put a little bit on the corner there okay uh, so that is just again it's nice and obvious because everyone has all the same kit don't they especially you know working with different people day in day out It'd be really easy to lose track of stuff so I'm going to go through all of this which is an epic task so I recommend before doing this grabbing a coffee <laughs> my 
the second coffee of the morning uh, already so I'm properly wired at the moment um, but yeah still going through marking all this kit nut keys literally everything it's a long job I put this down because I just don't want to get paint and, and stuff on uh, not that this is particularly clean out here or anything but I just uh, I didn't think purple paint on the floor would be a good look for my backyard the back patio I think that's about it though so I say good opportunity to just go through everything clean it mark it replace anything that needs replacing or make a note of it to put it on the shopping list uh, to, to go and buy at a later date and then we've got to store it so make sure it's fully dry and then just I just have it nice and organized that yeah it's just just the way I am I like stuff to be organized so it's easy to find this especially when it's work stuff because I can just grab the sort of specific stuff I need um, without having to hunt around for it all it's all pretty simple to store I hang it on a bit of cord like that so again it's all in groups and that make sure slings are unknotted make sure ropes are stored nice and and loosely and that's about it really ideally right in a nice dark cupboard so I've got a cupboard under the stairs it's not out in UV light or anything like that got shelves for my ropes uh, and then just hanging spots for that to cut hang off as you saw when I got it all out earlier um, but away from UV light is key and just, and this sounds obvious, but away from any chemicals and stuff like that. Well, there you go, I hope that's been uh, sort of slightly interesting uh, how to look after your kit. It's a long job, this one. I'm gonna be at it for you know an hour or so, at least marking all these bits, so much stuff. Um, but hey, I think it's worth doing. Please do fire away with any questions. As always, you know, I'm happy to answer as best I can. Do fire us on Insta, fire us on Facebook, you know, the school with that. Give us a like, give us a, a subscribe on YouTube as well. The numbers are, are doing so well, it's blowing my mind, so I'm massively appreciative of that. Um, but I say, hope you enjoyed this video. More videos coming up very soon.